flag, or the Brazilian flag actually has a Portuguese banner running across it that says something like, we're really good at soccer, or something like that. <laughs> um, so it's close, though, it's close. But why is this amazing? Why is this amazing, please, Renee? Or why is it not amazing? Tell me what your, what your take is. I was going to say your eye usually goes white first. Okay, and if your eyes aren't white, suddenly you realize that 99.99% of the flag is not white. And you maybe start wondering why the rest of the flag is what it is, and then you suddenly realize, wow, that's a flag. That's not just a rectangle and a diamond and a circle, that's a flag. And then you might say, oh, what country is it? And then you look down here and you see Zill, and probably Brazil. And you can see that in the actual diagram because it shows you there. And then you might say, oh, wow, Brazil. I wonder if they're talking about poverty levels in Brazil. And you realize eventually, you come, hopefully you would come to this given time with yourselves and be like, oh my god. They're talking about this disparity of wealth in Brazil. And I'm sure there's a disparity of wealth in every country, but maybe not to that extreme that we see in this flag. Others, please. My problem with it is that there's such a big gap between, it goes from people there to is. less than 1,000. Why would that be? Tell me your name one more time. Danielle. Danielle, thank you. Danielle notices this huge gap. There's a gap between 1,000 a, a and 100,000. Why would that gap be there, do you think? Luanda, go ahead. There might not be a existence of middle class in Brazil. I don't know socioeconomically if there is one. It might be that those particular numbers didn't fit the colors on the flag. I mean, maybe they were trying to fit the flag to the data, or fit the data to the flag versus the flag to the data. But there might not be a middle class. That might reinforce the point. Yeah, please. I Let got me. really confused because originally I was just like, oh, the Brazilian flag. And then I saw the <laughs> yeah. white, and that looked like a graph to me. I was trying to figure out where the white Like, like where the y and x axis were. Mean? Yeah, mm -hmm. and that didn't make any sense. And then when I started reading the, the key on the right, then I got even more confused because I was like, Sure. Wow, that's actually, it looks like it's almost included in the global. It seems like the. the that they should be separate, not on top of I them. totally agree with you, except for the fact that you can you can get the information you need mathematically if you wanted to. You could actually figure out the area that's covered in green, the area that's covered in yellow, and so forth, assuming that they're not overlaying. Yeah, I had to totally back, that's okay. I try had this. to totally reverse my, my mental process because that just didn't Try this. Trigger. Try this one instead. Instead. Okay. Oh, wow. Okay. That's hard. That, that, that's a little more obvious, I think. Yeah. Okay, so you got China's flag. And you're making an assumption here. You're making, you're making the assumption that a working 14-year-old will not be studied. So this is what's called mutually exclusive categories that might not be correct. But according to Grand Report of Gem 10 years ago, and they, this is 10 years old and it's getting old, but I just can't help but use it because it's, it, it's powerful. What estimate, what percentage estimate do you think are, are studied? Give me a ballpark. Give me a percentage of, of that flag that's yellow. Six. Six percent? Eight percent? Yeah. Somewhere below 10%. The remainder is the remainder is red, and that's telling. That's very telling. Maybe we should start with this flag. And go to Brazil second. I think so. Yeah, yeah. like we'll you, I, this wouldn't. Have, yeah, I don't think the other one would have been so hard to understand. Let's just do that. Beautiful. Three. Now my brain is fried. Okay. Like, oh. It is. Well, it's probably my favorite one. My favorite one. My favorite one a lot. We actually test this in 244. It's 10 years old now. The war in Iraq is quote unquote over. Um, and you've got, it's amazing to me. It's amazing to me when you see that. And I test my 244 students. And so what percentage do you think is blue? Give me a ballpark. 15-ish, 28-ish. It's about, it's just a smidge under 20. I've actually calculated it. I had to get in there and figure out the area where those stars and subtract 50 of them from the rectangle, but it's 19.7 percent. Yeah, I love that guy. I'm the guy in the back of the room. Can I have more problems, please? 19.7 percent. We're going to test it in 244. We test it every term, and it's surprising. The results are surprising, and I, I, I'm curious to track it over time as we get further and further away from the Iraq invasion to see if it gets worse. When it's not in the news, we tend to focus on things. And when it's not in the news, we tend to let them go. But you see what I'm getting at? So we'll have to, we'll have to come back to that one. Um, that one's too hard to look at. I, I like that one, but it's too hard on the big screen. Let's get anything out of this one. It, this, this, this projector doesn't fit the screen very well. So that says crew. It says class, crew, first class, second class, third class. Uh, sex, female, male, survived, no, yes. Close, damn close. This, this, this event represented in this data just had a big anniversary. Yes, Jamie, Jamie's got it. In 1912, the Titanic sank, North Atlantic. 
This is a roster of everybody on board and what happened to them and what gender they were. Now, a bit of a headache, perhaps. But what do you get from this graphic? Not very much. Tell me why not very much. I got a lot, once I looked at it for more than, I had to look at it for more than a few seconds ago. No key, like, I don't understand what these colors are. Okay, let, let's figure it out together. And this is what I had to go through. I, I look at this first and I'm like, that's a headache. John, John's gonna be at the same place I was. So I look, I look up there. This represents 100% of the people on board the boat. I think it was around 2,000 people, but that's not so much important as what percent. So what a percent? Maybe 40 were crew? 40% were crew? Yeah. Is that okay? Maybe 30% third class? Okay. And then what's left? 15 and 15? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Maybe, maybe ish? Yeah. Okay, so that's ish. That's the percentage broken down by class, but crew were first or second or third. Once you go from there, you split it down to, and I wish they fit better, there's actually a very skinny red line going from crew down to female. But the vast majority of the crew was male. The vast majority of the crew was male. Very, very small percentage were female. And that was 1912, that's kind of the way it was. First class, almost an even split, yeah? Almost an even split, male to female, probably because they were married couples traveling together, I would imagine, I'm, I'm guessing. Uh, second class looks up, not quite as evenly split. Looks like it's about that. The yellow is hard to see on this projector too. There's your yellow. Here's your here's your yellow. So maybe a two to one, two to one. Uh, third class, you can see the split between male and female as well. Okay, very huge, very much larger. So as the classes go down, we're getting more and more guys and fewer and fewer females present percentage. This is what the bottom survived in the top. Yes, side, bottom. The bottom is no survived. Yes, survived. Oh, okay. So and, and again, I apologize. This thing isn't quite set up perfectly. But this is no survive, that's yes survive. You can't see the female crew, but this line coming across is about five times as thick as the line going down. Which means, if you were a female crew member, you probably lived. It's a five to one odds that you lived. How about the guy crew members? Look at the guy crew members. Here's the guys, here's the ones that died, there's the ones that lived, and the ones that lived were probably the ones in the, in the rowboat taking away from the boat, honestly. Yeah. Now, honestly, I, I mean, yeah. that, that's, women and children first, you go down with the ship when you're a sailor. So at least in 1912. Okay, look at the first class women. Okay, here they are. A very, very skinny, you can't even see it because it's cut off, I think. Is this it right here? Yeah. That's it, there it is, ba-boom. Very skinny, number died. Like one. Like one. It was it was the, the cute little old couple. Yeah. The Strausses, right? The camera made a huge deal about them in the movie, I remember. So there's, there's Mr. Strauss, and here are the remainder of the first class women living. Right so far? Okay, how about the second class? Here's the women. Oh, how'd the guys do first class? Not too well. About two to one, three to one. So most of the first class guys died too. Chivalry. Chivalry, perhaps, right, 1912. Second class, women, okay. Uh, women lived here, women died here. So again, most of the women lived. How about second class guys, how'd they do? Yeah, most of the yellow is a terrible color for this not overhead. Good. Not not as good. So there's the there's the live there's the died second class guys, here's the live. So pretty pretty bad, like like ten to one odds against you living if you're a second class guy. How about the third class folks? Muerte. Third class is the only class where more women died than lived. Look at that. Look at those bars. This is what caught me when I read this graph. That's what caught my attention. Here's the third class women bar right here. Here's the ones that died, here's the ones that lived. Twice as many third class women died as lived. That's the only class where that gender was overrepresented in the death count. Why? And Cameron had a field day with this one too, if you remember. Do you remember the field day he had with this one? Because they locked third class below deck while they cleared out first and second. He had, I mean, who knows what actually happened 100 years ago? But he had a field day with that statistic. And people hated him for it. And some people agreed with him for it. Because people, the survivors said that that's actually what happened, who knows? How the third class guys do? Predictably poorly. <laughs> Predictably poorly. The guys pretty much did crappy on average on the boat. So but the third that's what that so man, I'm with you. It's hard to look at. But when I saw this, my jaw was like, why? That's go ahead. It, it's really pretty. It just looks like 1980s design. It would be what's wrong with the eighties? Nothing yeah. wrong with the eighties. Yeah. 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 It's a lot going on. This is actually a special, a special program that generates grass like this. I hate the colors. I think that's what you're getting at. If they picked better colors, I think it would be a lot more easy to see. This is my opinion. But 
I was able to extract that one particular statistic or parameter, I guess, in this case, and that really kind of blew me away. Please. Uh, and I'm wondering, where did they lift the kids under? Did they lift them under? Oh, whatever class they were, I would imagine, because yeah. there were first and second and third class kids, too. They're traveling with their families. Male, that's kids. not all. Maybe that's where. Oh, good, good call. Maybe that's, that's where the livers, mm, the living maybe. men in the third class were. I wasn't kids. thinking male, female versus. Yeah, I don't know. But, I mean, I'm assuming that whoever generated this graph knocked the kids down by gender. <laughs> Data is horribly inaccurate from this, by the way, because it's 100 years old. It doesn't always agree from place to place. Basically, what it, what is agreed is there were 2,000 people on board, and I think a little over half of them died. I think that's kind of like the the override, or two thirds of them died, or something like that. That's kind of like the overriding goal, and it's just viewed as a humongous tragedy, obviously. That would actually make a lot of sense, though, because if you've got uh, the third class women dying, it could be because they're putting their male boy, their little boys. It's on the quite ship. possible. It's quite possible. We we have to actually get further into the data and see what they how they classify the children, which I didn't even think of the one honestly. I just assumed they were broken down by gender, but who knows? I mean, if they weren't counted that way, if it was men, women, and children, who knows where they got? What is it? Just put half and half. I don't have a good answer for you, unfortunately. So raises questions, but also elucidates me in one at least one way. Um, that's a hundred dollar bill. That is ten thousand dollars. A hundred hundred dollar bills. Now it's too big too. So let's make it the scale. That is ten or a hundred, excuse me, of the previous packets of ten thousand. So one hundred ten thousand dollar packets is one million dollars. And there's a six foot tall guy for scale. That's how that's what a million bucks would look like in hundred dollar bills. With me so far? Okay. So there's one million dollars. If we put a whole bunch of those on a packet, on a on pallet, we get $100 million. So there's a dude. Imagine a pallet. I okay, know pallets are slightly different, but imagine your average pallet. There's $100 million. As I put 10 of those together, I get a billion dollars. That's a billion. Okay, so let's, let's go backtrack a little bit. There's a million. There's a billion. Is the insane? What does a trillion look like? <laughs> Form it in your mind right now what a trillion looks like. It's a thousand of those. No. You ready? <laughs> Find the dude. Oh, you can't because the damn screen's cutting him off. He's over there. <laughs> <laughs> These are too high. Two pallets high. Just so you know. Oh. Those are two pallets high. So he's this big. That's a trillion dollars. When you hear politicians throw around millions, billions, and trillions, you keep these three images in mind. And when you hear mention the national debt, that's 2011. It's worse. 2009. 2009. It's worse. That's so good. That's so good. You keep these, keep these visuals in mind, friends. Trillion, billion, million. That's your tax money. Get out there and vote. That's what made me immediately think of all the money that they were trying to stash in Breaking Bad. Ah, nice. Very nice. Very nice. In the, in, the, in the roof of the class. Oh, that was the cell phone. I only watched it only three times, unfortunately. I know it's a crime, I'm sorry. All right, I got one more to leave you with. One more to leave you with. You may have seen this picture before. It's a very, very famous picture, except this actually isn't. This is an artist's rendering of a famous picture. I want you to focus on just that section of that face. I'm gonna zoom in. You start zooming in, you're like, oh, this is one of those crappy internet pictures that you stole, and you start making it bigger and it gets pixelated. But I want you to focus in even more on that spot. I want you to focus in on that spot. Oh, wow. And you begin to notice something. Yeah, the entire thing is made up of, of cigarette box tops. Cool. And this is why it's so cool. Here's the original. Vincent Van Gogh, cleverly called Skull with Cigarette, 1885. Chris Jordan, 2007, Seattle-based artist. Read this. That's what the picture's made up of. Wow. 200,000 box tops of cigarette make up that, that image which is equal to a half a year's worth of cigarette smoking deaths in America. He's got an entire series, I linked it here if you want to check it out. He's got an entire series called Portraits of American Consumption, and he's also got one now, he's gone worldwide with it. He does things like using Barbie dolls to talk, show elective like, breast augmentation. And some of you have seen his work. It's, I think you're supposed to think about it, it's, it's a phenomenal way of presenting statistics that is so not standard, but it's so like, holy crap. There's one where it's five rectangles of orange, and there's a great picture of his parents standing in front of him looking like this. It's entirely made of prison uniforms. Little orange prison uniforms stacked together showing the number of incarcerated people in America at any given time. Five huge panels that are made of little tiny prison uniforms like this. 
it just it kind of like hits you right in the right in the gut. Like, oh wow, it's that much. It's kind of like that trillion dollar image, but on a less monetary scale, a more kind of real scale. Staggering, friends. Staggering. All right, I have one last question for you. How many keys do you have with you today? Oh, don't don't worry. <laughs> I gotta put this paper right this on. I'll write on the board now. We're gonna start with this data next time. I can't promise you a Chris Jordan esque graph, but we'll do something with it. Anybody have no keys at all with them today? There we go. I was just gonna apologize, John, for the for the for the X versus F column. No keys at all, we got two? Okay, so zero, we got two. Beautiful. Who has one key with them today? One key. Whoa. One, two, three. Two keys with them today. Three keys with them today. I'm, I'm voting against the dot plot or a, a stem and leaf for this one because I have no idea how many. Sometimes I have people 17 and 18 keys with them. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. Four keys. Four keys. Five keys. Six keys. Oh, we got one. Seven keys. Over here. Eight keys. Got one eight key. This is great in the tail. Nine. Ten. Eleven. Twelve. Anybody above twelve? Okay, there's our distribution. There's our distribution of keys. We'll play with that next time. We'll play with that next time. But if you would for Monday, this is your first homework assignment. I think you're ready. I think you're ready. So, see how it says homework for intro to probability statistics. You know where that is? You can say no if you want to. It's on the website. It's on the website. Yep, you got it on the schedule page. So I'm going to get to my website in case you've forgotten where this stuff is. There we are. What do I click on? Yes, ma'am. Course information. What do I click on? Which one on the left side? Over there on that side. Good. Which one? It's off your chart. Oh, you can't see it? <laughs> oh, this is terrible. You can't see it. It's a schedule thing. I'm going to fix this right now. With the you guys schedule and then... Yeah, I'm going to fix this after you guys leave. Yeah, uh, Math 243 homework sheet right there in the middle. It's, also, it's in a bunch of different places, and I'll put it even more places, but here's the easiest place to get to it right here. And you see that intro to problem statistics? Click on that bad boy. <laughs> sheet opens up. I'm hopefully between now and... Monday, I'm going to have some YouTube videos linked in with some of these problems. Anything that doesn't have a solution already, I'm going to try to get a solution linked in for you guys. Record them on, I'm going to record them on Friday afternoon, so uh, you'll have more solutions to look from. So, do as many of those until you've got a pretty good feel on them. Bring your questions to class on Monday. We'll start with those. Cool? Thank you, guys. We'll catch you then. I could roll, right? Yeah. 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 <laughs>